Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. So in today's video I'm doing the seventh tutorial in my Pi game programming series and in this video we're going to be talking about collision. So specifically collision between the bullets and our goblin that we did in the last tutorial. So you can see here when we, we have our little character he can shoot his bullets, our goblin runs around the screen and I've got these little red boxes around my characters here. Now they look very oversized but currently this is actually what our characters hitboxes look like. Now to do collision we typically use boxes in Pi game just because it's easier. You can use trigonometry if you're doing stuff with circular objects but we're just going to ignore that for now because it's a lot easier to do with squares. Now the way that the hitbox works is pretty much as soon as these two boxes come in collision with each other so one is inside of the other we're going to say that the two objects are colliding. Now clearly these hitboxes are not perfect and they are not uh, correctly around our characters. They should be shrunken in a little bit and probably moved down so that they're touching each edge of our character. Now you can, I can prove to you this is actually the hitbox of our character uh, because when I go to the edge of the screen here, remember we've said um, that our character X, which is here, plus the width, if that's going to be past the edge of the screen, we're not going to let it move. And same thing on the left hand side here. It's not going to be quite perfect, but you can see that the same thing goes for here. Uh, it's not letting us move off the screen like that. So that is indeed our hitbox. Uh, and the reason it's so big is because the images that we downloaded are 64 by 64, but the actual uh, populated areas of pixels is not that much. So we have to now create the hitboxes for these characters so that when we are shooting our bullets at the character, uh, they collide properly. I'm also going to show you guys how to fix these uh, these bullets from shooting at like the same time. You can see how they shoot two at once. Uh, it's a pretty easy fix and I'll do that later in the video. So make sure you stay for that. Okay, so let's get right into it. So in order to fix these hitboxes, uh, we just need to manually define them. So this is what a lot of game developers will actually do. And I know it seems tedious right now, but it's easy because it's easy to do it's better to do now actually because once you do it then any instance of the class you create later will have uh, a hitbox that's adapted to that so I'm just gonna open up on my other screen here uh, you guys can't see it the perfect like dimensions for the hitboxes just so we don't have to play around with it too much but if you have a different character a different sprite you've used you're just gonna want to play around with the uh, hitbox on it maybe move it left to right move it up and down until it looks like it's about on your character so what I'm gonna do here I'm just gonna copy and paste this in uh, is in my player class up here in the first uh, initialization method I'm just gonna do self dot hitbox and then I'm gonna set it equal to this so it's gonna be make sure you have these brackets not the square brackets we're gonna do self dot x plus 20 self dot y 28 and 60 now you might notice that this is actually a rectangle so whenever you have four things inside of a tuple uh, typically we ref just refer to that as a rectangle um, because this is gonna be the x this is the y and this is the width and the height now conveniently this is actually the argument that our draw function or what do you call it function draw method takes for drawing something on the screen so we've created a rectangle here um, but inside of this box I'm just gonna write self dot hitbox so now it's gonna be drawing our new hitbox now for our player our player can move right so if we just define this hitbox at the beginning then our hitbox is not gonna be moving with our player so we're gonna copy this again and we're going to need to paste it at the bottom of our draw method here. So this way, every time we draw the character, we're going to be moving the hitbox with it uh, and changing that hitbox so that we can check for it. And you'll understand what I mean uh, in a little bit if you don't get it now. So we're going to go down to the enemy now. And for the enemy, the hitbox is slightly different, but it's pretty similar. So I'm going to just going to do self.hitbox again as an attribute. And in our initialization method, we're just going to paste it and just copy this down so self.x plus 20 self.y 28 and 60 now that is what it is for our enemy and same thing every time we move our enemy we need to change the hitbox so at the bottom of our draw we're going to change the hitbox simply by doing that now again we need to make sure we're actually drawing this new hitbox so in our draw uh, that we've done here we are going to just write self.hitbox and the reason we don't need to put brackets around it is because we already have the brackets here. We're going to save the program and run it and see what happens. And there we go. We get our hitboxes. Now you can probably tell that they're not perfect. Uh, I could probably play around with them a bit more to make them better. I'm going to fix this guy actually right now just because his hip his hitbox is a little bit off. The goblin um, it's fine for right now. I don't I'm not going to worry about it that much. 
So let's go back up to the player character here. And this is what I mean. Once you create the hitbox, you're going to have to play around with it a bit um, just to make sure everything's perfect. So we'll go here and we're going to change this to 17. And we're going to change this self.y. We're going to add 11 to it. Going to change this to 29. And we'll change this to 52. And these are the numbers I was looking for before. And we're just going to copy these. So control C. And I'm going to paste it up here as well. So just we're consistent. And then we're going to go down to our enemy here. And we're going to change these ones a little bit too. So for our self.enemy, or just for our enemy, what am I saying? We need to just change this to instead of 20, we're going to be using 17. So let's change this one first. 17, self.y. We're going to add two to that. We're going to change this to 31, the width, and we're going to change the height to 57. Then you can go ahead, copy that, paste that up here where our other hitbox is defined. And we're going to run the program one more time and see how that looks. And that looks much better. There we go. So the hitboxes now are, I would say, almost perfect. Again, it doesn't matter too much if they're like a pixel or two off. Um, just try your best to get them as close as you can. And obviously with the walking animation, they're going to not be perfect all the time, but that's good enough for me. And now we're going to get into the collision. So what we want to happen here is we want these uh, circles to be able to collide with that rectangle. And when that happens, we're simply going to print to the screen that we hit the goblin. Now you guys can do whatever you want. When we hit the goblin, you can make like explosions come off. You can make it say something you can make the goblin disappear. Um, we can play with that in the next video, but right now we simply want to get the collision working so that we know when the character is hit. So this is a little bit harder than it looks. Um, the first thing we're going to do is just in our enemy class here, we're just going to define a new method. We're going to call this one hit and it's going to take the argument or parameter self. Then we're just going to pass in here. Now, this is what you guys are going to do every time that the goblin gets hit. So for me, I'm actually just going to print hit. You guys can do whatever you want in here once the goblin gets hit. Uh, but that's all I'm going to do for right now. Okay, so now that we've done that, uh, we need to check for collision. So the way we're going to check for collision is in our main loop here. And we're pretty much just going to check every time the bullet is shot. So not shot, but like if a bullet is moving across the screen, that's why we have this for loop for all the bullets. In this for loop, we're going to check if the bullet has collided with the goblin. Now to do this, there's a few uh, if statements and else statements we need to include. Now it's a little bit complex, but pretty much if we run the program, an easy way, a good way to understand it is always like drawing and visualizing stuff uh, in programming is when we shoot the bullet, we need to see if it is inside of this rectangle. Now, if it's inside of the rectangle, then we're going to say it hit. If it's not inside of the rectangle, then it didn't hit, right? So if we jump up here, although the X's might be the same as the X's here, uh, we need to make sure that's inside the rectangle. So it has to be in between the two Y values of our square. And that'll make sense as I explain this uh, here. So before we start moving the bullets, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do an if statement here. And we're just going to check if the bullets are within the same Y coordinate. So within the top and the bottom of the rectangle of our goblin. So if the uh, Y coordinate of our bullet is in between the top and the bottom of our rectangle, then that means that the Y coordinate of our bullet, which is in the middle of our bullet, which is an issue. So we need to add uh, or we need to actually subtract the radius here so that we are checking the bottom of the or the top of the bullet. Sorry, uh, if that is less than our goblin hitbox, so dot hitbox. And we're going to use the Y coordinate of the hitbox here plus the goblin dot hitbox. And this is going to be our, what do you call it? Our uh, height. So goblin dot hitbox of three. So if this means if we are less than, if we are above the bottom of our rectangle, and now we need to check if we are below the top of our rectangle. So now if bullet dot dot Y plus bullet dot radius. So this means the top of our bullet or the bottom of our bullet, sorry, is less than or greater than. And now we do goblin dot hitbox and just the Y coordinate here. So now this part here, this checks to make sure that we are above the bottom of the rectangle of our goblin. And this part here checks to make sure that we are below the top of the rectangle. Now, just because we meet those two criteria, 
does not mean we've hit the uh, the goblin. So to see if we hit the goblin, we now need to check the left side and the right side and make sure we are in between that. So to do that, similarly, we're going to do if bullet dot x. So instead of y, minus the radius or plus bullet dot radius. What am I doing? And here we're going to need to make sure we have bullet so that this works. Can't just put radius like I've been putting there. Bullet dot radius. So plus the bullet dot radius. If this is greater than the goblin dot hitbox x coordinate. So hitbox zero, this axis is our x coordinate. This means that we are on the right side of the left side of the rectangle. Hope that makes sense there. Uh, and our bullet dot x minus our bullet dot radius is what is it here we're gonna have to make sure that it is less than the right side so to do that we then need to do goblin dot hitbox one zero sorry because we're accessing the x plus goblin dot hitbox three or hitbox two because that's going to be the width all right and that should hopefully work so now if that is all good, so that means that we've satisfied all these uh, conditions now, then that means we have to we have to do something here. So if we are within the y coordinates, we are within the x coordinates, then we just have to do hit, right? So we're going to do goblin dot hit. And this is what happens when the goblin gets hit. It's going to come up here. It's going to call this. It's going to print hit. Now, we also want to make sure that when we hit the goblin, our bullet disappears. So to do that, we're going to do the same thing that we did here when we were moving the bullets. And we're simply going to remove the bullet from the list. Now, we already did this, so I'm not going to explain how it works, but it just removes it from the list. So just, just put that there. And we can go ahead now and run the program. And hopefully everything should be working. All right, so we've got our two little characters with their hitbox. And when I shoot my bullets and they hit the goblin, you can see that it says hit. Now, yes, sometimes they hit at different points. So sometimes you can see they disappear instantly. Other times they take longer. They go further into the box. Uh, that's fine. They're still hitting. Now, the last error that we need to address here, the last thing, is the fact that our bullets shoot in like groups of two and groups of three. Now, it's actually a pretty easy fix. Um, so just follow along right here. We're going to need to create a variable to do this. And I'm just going to call this shoot loop. You can call it whatever you want. I know shoot loops kind of a weird name, but that's what we're going to use. And at the end of our, uh, when we're shooting the bullets here, so when we hit space, I'm just going to do shoot loop equals one. Now I'm going to come back up here and I'm just going to write a little bit of stuff here and I'll explain how it works after. So we have if shoot loop is greater than zero, then shoot loop plus equals one. And then if shoot loop is greater than three shoot loop equals zero and then i'm going to come down here and i'm going to say and shoot loop equals equals zero okay so i went fast there but pretty much what happens here and this just fixes our issue by setting like a really basic timer uh is we say we're only going to allow the the user to shoot a bullet if uh the bullet cooldown is met so the bullet cooldown is what what we're going to be uh, calling shoot loop pretty much so when we first shoot a bullet we have shoot loop equals one then we run through the while loop we go through the rest of it we come back up to the top we say if shoot loop is greater than zero meaning that it is uh one or greater then we're going to add to one to it so we start at one we go to two and then if it's greater than zero it's going to be set to zero it's not greater than zero in this instance because it's only two right now we come down here say we're spamming the space bar uh, it's not working because our shoot loop is not equal to zero yet. Then we're going to go through the while loop again. It's going to become three. Is it greater? Is shoot loop greater than three? No, it's not. We're going to go through it again. And then eventually once it becomes four, we're going to set this equal to zero. This is now going to be met and it's going to allow us to hit space again. Don't really worry if you don't understand how that works. Pretty much it's just setting a really basic timer uh, for like a few milliseconds to make sure that we can't just spam the space bar and shoot multiple bullets. Anyways, let's see if this works. 
and now you can see that was weird at the beginning there uh it shoots only one bullet at a time and i can't just like that's as much as i can spam the space bar like that so that it kind of gives like a break between bullets uh, and yeah, there you go. And we also have that limit so you can only have five bullets on the screen at a time And that's also just to reduce lag and So that you can't just like continually spam the spacebar and you can see every time we hit the goblin it says hit and everything seems to be working Pretty well now in the next video I'm gonna go on to make sure to make this uh, player collide with the goblin if you guys feel so uh, Feel confident about what I just showed here. You might want to try to do this by yourself so you can see if you can get the player to hit the goblin. A little bit more complicated, but not really, not that much. And if you guys want to add something else too, try to see if you can add uh, like a little score variable that says how many times the goblin gets hit. Pretty straightforward. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions or concerns, leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. And yeah, I'll see you guys again in the next tutorial.